This is the first part of a short two-part series showing how to read a full 16 multiplex potentiometer inputs into a max patch via Arduino. This is going to be the basis of a sequencer project that I am designing that uses machine learning to vary the pitch sequence. But for now, I just want to explain how to grab that potentiometer data. And this video is going to be about getting the inputs into Arduino and onto the serial monitor. This circuit here uses two CD4051 multiplex chips, which allow eight analog sensors to be read on a single analog pin on the Arduino. This means that you can have way more knobs and buttons to play with, with the downside being that the signal is read slightly less often. If you'd like to see a longer write-up of putting this circuit together, it and the basic circuit diagram are available on my website in the description. On the data sheet here, you can see that it has a common input-output pin. This pin connects to the analog pin on the Arduino and um, sends all the data from the in-out channels here. These ones, which are all connected to the potentiometers. A, B and C are digital inputs for binary code, which are connected to pins 8, 9 and 10 on the Arduino. In the datasheet, there's also something called a truth table, which is what shows how these pins work. The first pin is the inhibit, which is going over to digital pin 7 on the Arduino, and it stops any data coming through if it's set to 1. C, B and A, uh, which are these three from before, allow the Arduino to send a code which tells the multiplexer which channel to read from, and I'll Again, I'll go over that more when we get into the code. So, to start the code, the first thing we want to do is create our constant integers. We just talked about pin 7, so that's the inhibit pin on the multiplexer. So we're going to go const int inhibit, that's inhibit multiplexer, equals pin 7, that's digital pin 7. Um, we're also going to need a POTS, which is this top row of potentiometers, and those are connected to the multiplexer that is connected to A0. So we want A0. And then the same for the second row of potentiometers. They're sent to pin 1. And that's that for now. We're going to go into setup. As we're going to be needing to send things to the serial monitor, we're going to need to set up a serial begin object. Um, not object. I'm going to use um, serial 9600. Pin mode for the inhibit pin. We're just going to set to output. And we also want to write to that low so that it's not interfering with anything to start with. As you can see in this truth table, if it's zero, that goes with any of these channels here. And if it's one or anything else, no channel. So if that's high, we're going to be getting some issues. So this is the part where the code starts to look a bit unusual. This part of the code is taken from another tutorial by Bobby Bob, I think, which I will link in the references in the description or somewhere. And it is using direct port access so that it can change all of the port outputs at the same time. First, I want to set the DDRB, which is the port B data direction register. So um, this allows me to set the pins on port B as either inputs or outputs. So port B is six digital pins, eight to 13, plus two pins on the crystal pin in the Arduino. And this is what the string of eight digits is gonna be here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these first two are on the crystal pin. These are eight to 13 and they're reverse. So this is eight, nine, 10, which links up to pins eight, nine, and 10 on the Arduino. It's important not to change these first two bits as this may cause issues with the crystal in the Arduino. I want to set these as outputs, so it's 0, 0, 0, 0 and then 1, 1, 1, so they're all outputs. I'm just going to write port 8, 9, 10 as outputs. And so now that I've set these as outputs, I want to set them to low 
using port E, which is sort of like using digital write in a way. And that's just going to be for eight um, zeros. Port eight, nine, ten as low. So that's our pin mode for the inhibit pin, and then writing low on that to start with. This is pin modes for 8, 9, and 10. I'm writing low on those to start with. And now we just need pin mode for A pots input, because we want to receive from that, and pin mode B pots the same. And that's the setup sorted. So um, on to the loop. Right, so I'm going straight back in with some of this port B stuff. So I'm just setting them all to low so that it's reading the uh, zero channel for step one. And you can see that here. So if um, C, B and A, which are 8, 9 and 10 on the Arduino, are all zero, we will be going through to channel zero there. So port B equals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight zeros. And that gets us channel zero data flow. And the rest of it's a little bit more straightforward to read. So I'm going to make a new integer called step one A, which is going to be the analog read on the A pots uh, when the data is flowing over channel zero. Nice. And then I'm going to print that to the serial print, like so. So I want serial print step 1a. And then as we've got both of these multiplexers here sharing digital input pins, meaning that these codes are being sent to both of them at the same time, so it's reading in the same one on each at the same time, it is nice to read the step b potentiometer at the same time. So um, we want to make another integer, exactly the same as B, exactly the same as A, I mean, but with B. So step one A equals analog read B pots. And I've forgotten my thing there, haven't I? And there. So exactly the same, we want serial print step one B. But the issue here is that those are both gonna come up right next to each other in the, um, serial input. So if I upload this to the Arduino now, we've just got this number and this number over and over and over again. And over and over and over and over. And you can change them. You can get it all to show zero. Zero, 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 zero. But it's just, it's not very intuitive. So to remedy that, you want to just put a space in between the two. And you can set this one as line, and it will make a new line at the beginning there. So if we upload this now, see, it's a bit easier to read. We've got two separate numbers which we can use. So once we've done that, the last integer I'm going to make is a weight integer. So I'm going to set that to 100 for now. And this basically means when I put this delay in, at the end of the uh, read, I'm able to adjust it as necessary rather than going through the code and um, changing this number a million times. Just going to put a delay on there so it has a second to read this channel. And um, that's pretty much the entire code, honestly. But what you want to do is copy this down many, many, many times. And um, by many times, I mean seven times. But um, you want to take this print line away because you want to get it all showing on one line with the print line on the very last one on the eighth step so that when it reaches the eighth step, it creates a new list of information to work from. What I'm going to do is just copy this down. And this is a good time to explain how we get channel one. So we can see the zero, zero, one. So we literally want zero, zero, one. And this is step two. So it's step two. And that's, that's literally it. So do that again. Channel three. Channel three is zero, one, zero. Wait. 
it's not channel three, we want channel two. And channel two, that's, that's why it's confusing because we've got step three, channel two. Um, but that's my decision really there, isn't it? So channel two is zero, one, zero. I want this one to be a one. And these two will be threes. Channel three. And I'll just skip through the rest of this just to go over it one more time. If you want to go through channel three, see here, channel three, C, zero, B, one, A, one. C is connected to this one, B is connected to this one, and A is connected to this one. So changing it like this, one, zero, zero, same as one, zero, zero. Well, except for the one, three, so zero, one, one, same as three. Zero, one, one, plus channel three. So one more time, channel four, we do want one, zero, zero. And that's channel four, and step one. And right, this is the important part. So, like I said before, we want to change this into serial print line because that way we're getting a new line and it's a lot easier to read when you've got separate lines of 16 rather than just a huge bar of a million numbers with no differentiator between them. It's also important when I get to the point of reading it into max because it has a specific way of reading the carriage return, the enter key. One more thing that's worth doing before finishing this off is just clearing the read using the inhibit pin at the end of the multiplexing cycle. This is just done super simply by writing high to the um, inhibit pin. Inhibit and then delay just for a little bit to give it a second and then just digital right inhibit max low uh, which just allows the data to flow back through so when you are putting it high we're stopping data flow and then back low again starting data flow and that is um that really is the whole code a lot of it is just the same thing over and over again um there might be a way to loop it so if anyone has any ideas on that feel free to tell me in the uh, next video i'm going to go over a max patch which allows you to read all of this data in and use it for rapid prototyping or even ableton live patch um i suppose while we're here i better show you what comes in through the serial monitor so that's not quite it is it what did i do wrong ah yes so in order to get this actually working we need a space at the beginning of all the other steps yeah. and eight and now we should have the right thing coming out let's have a look yep so now we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen separate numbers coming in over two pins and at the moment this is doing it at quite a slow rate at 100 milliseconds you could technically tell it to do one um i'm not sure that's a good idea but let's have a look it seems to work fine that's working or if you want a particularly slow read for some reason maybe just to save resources to be honest because fair play go to a thousand put that on but yeah there you can see it's coming through it's coming through just really slowly i thought 10 was a good number but you can experiment with it for whatever purposes you have but anyway um i'm gonna leave that bit here and um, I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.